so Max, did you improv the line "Juge my crack"? Was that in the script, or was that all you? <laughs> no, I can't believe they used that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They used it. I, you know, that was the moment that we really hit on something beautiful. Right. Oh my God, your dog! Wait, Max, you have a dog okay. now? I didn't know. I got him yesterday. Oh. oh. Phone. I love that. Hey, poodle. Yeah, he's so poodle. Strange. Barboncino. Gorgeous. Barboncino. Barboncino! Peter's dad owns a restaurant in New York called Barboncino, which means poodle in Italian. Mm. He's poodle, actually. Look at that Barboncino. My Italian teacher didn't even know that that meant poodle. He's taking off my earring. I feel like if you had had the pup in the episode that you guys did, it could have maybe solved some of your, your problems. You're so right. And I've had but only temporarily, it. right? Oh, if we had had the dog? Temporarily. It's always just a Band-Aid. It's well, you right. reference an animal in the episode. Have you noticed that? Oh my God, you're right, I forgot. You say Finnegan licks it up. Oh my God, yes, I know, how funny. How funny that we never make any other gesture towards Finnegan. I know, I know. This is Finnegan. Oh my God, look at him. <laughs> He's a little bit like Ruthie, huh, Peter? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, my mother had a dog like this. All I've been thinking. It's all I've been thinking. Yeah, I mean, exactly. In fact, I gotta go. <laughs> That's too much. I um, had an amazing dog when, when they were. Yeah. I love that dog, Max. I cannot wait to meet him. What's the name? I actually didn't catch it. His name's Rock. 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 Wow. Rock. Did you name him? Yeah, I named him that. Rock? Like The Rock? Or just what is that based on? That's so cool. Like Dwayne The Rock Johnson or Rock Hudson? Yeah. Like Rock Hudson. He's a gay icon. <laughs> 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 I love that. like rock and roll than the genre of music or what? Rock. Can 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 rock can rock kick us off here and answer the first question? Yeah. All right. Um so rock, why don't you set up the episode that um that Max, your dog daddy, and Brian and Peter are in zero feet away. Well, um he day. hasn't seen it, but I'll I'll take over. Okay. <laughs> no, actually Brian's good at that. Yeah, it's this incredible episode written by Anthony Natalie. Is it pronounced Natalie? Natalie, yeah. You know, Natalie. 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 Um, uh, it's so well written, and it's uh, it was directed by Claire Scanlon. And um, first of all, the whole thing was shot remotely. They sent us all these. Um, I, I don't know if people know it was shot on iPhones. The conceit of it is that it's shot on security cameras. But in reality, it was shot on like a lot of iPhones that were sent to us. We got sent all of this cool equipment. Um, what's it called? Contactless deliveries, et cetera. And uh, yeah, it's just a really great episode about, it's almost like a mini movie because it's like, it's an anthology series and it's only 30 minutes each episode and ours is one of them. And it's about a gay couple that's basically fed up with each other. They've been dating for a while and they're trying to figure out what to do to deal with this kind of cabin fever. And so they start considering a threesome and, uh, and then they decide to have one uh, with a lovely character named Adam. And it's, uh, it's definitely an experience that you should tune in to check out. You can't use that picture. I Why look, not? I look like I'm about to cry. Some people are into that. Nobody is into that. Use the one from Tara's wedding. Yeah, that's good. Here, scroll down. Okay, body type. Toned? We're toned, are we not toned? I, think, I don't know, yeah. What are the options? I'd put average, but it sounds defeatist. Did you guys know each other beforehand? Had you guys crossed paths? Very much so, yeah, with the three of us. Friends, yeah. Well, I mean, Max and I, our friendship goes back to childhood. We went to yeah. a performing arts summer camp together uh, called French Woods Festival. Um, and really, and then Brian and I met and became basically best friends our freshman year of college. Great. So, yeah. uh, I mean, he met me, he told me, you should meet my friend Max, you would like him. And it turned out to be true. We've all become friends now. Because so. we were the only two gay people he knew. Hey, no. <laughs> no, Peter. No, that's know. true. That's totally true. I lived a very sheltered existence. Um, no, I, not I didn't at know, all. I actually didn't even know uh, anyone of any sexuality at that time. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, all your friends were gay. You just didn't know because they hadn't come out yet. Exactly. You're yeah, the only absolutely. one who wasn't gay. Bingo. Max and Peter are like cool New York City uh, boys, men. You know, I'm I'm like from the country, but uh, 
I'm just laughing because they're saying Peter didn't know any gay people, but he like grew up in Manhattan. So no, I'm lying. Totally lying. Sign. There's lots of there's a thick level of irony. Um, yeah, right sorry. Now. Yeah, uh, I like to point that out. <laughs> yeah, in case this is in print. Yeah. Uh, but to answer your question, yeah, we're all we're all like quite old friends at this point. No, I, I mean, think Anthony. What did you say? I just wanted to underscore that that these two are two of my the people I love most in the world as friends. I mean, it's, by far, we, we couldn't even believe this the whole time because, yeah, you know, I mean, so often your job is to, and it's possible, but so often the job <laughs> on acting is with acting is to become very close and intimate with people immediately. Right. This it was really felt like a party for a moment one because we're like, oh, you mean like. I mean, just the joking and the group texts and just the the, uh, <laughs> the hotel. The hotel. I mean, it really, it really was like a, a summer camp vibe, and I think I, that is in part due to the fact that they allowed friends and, in fact, sought out friends to do this, or people that had these um, deep and sort of, in our case, like decades long connections. Yeah. And then there's the fact that we were alone and we were being directed and the cameras were being moved by us, but they were being directed over Zoom. Everything was being directed over Zoom. We were the ones who were doing everything. So we were truly um, isolated from anyone else involved with the production. It was, yeah. we were an island unto I ourselves. I read that, I read that Zoom. Go ahead. I was just going to ask you about like the, the process of being directed on Zoom when all of you are used to in-person directing well it was so cool it was so cool because brian is a filmmaker and i said this before but um he's a brilliant filmmaker and he was getting so high on working with mark schwartzbart our dp because oh, yeah. mark is a genius has worked on so many brilliant things and brian is a genius and they were just kind of like i mean we were really lucky that we had brian to um he, on the ground to like make sure that all of our shit looked good and that it wasn't like a tripod at the back of the auditorium in a school play you know because all of our cameras were stationary because we had no one holding them yeah also on record peter has made a movie that like won south by southwest and i think max made you've made stuff that went, has gone to like sundance and stuff haven't you okay but you know you were the one who was like but excited actually, you have the most videos on the internet <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, yeah. We're, we're still tech illiterate over here and and we oh, really I am, a, I am a bit tech literate that's awesome. peter works primarily on film yeah exactly I, I, peter, works, peter does like um full paintings for each frame <laughs> yes exactly right yeah totally and i communicate with actors with the pit the pitch a little note on a pigeon you apply <laughs> i'm what you call old school Okay. Old school. Oh, that's old school directing. Yeah, the pigeon method hasn't been used for. I'm not even really sure how we're able to do this right now. I'm just sort of. It's to me, it's magic, and I'm letting you're it. You're just happen. saying yes. Yeah, it's it's spooky, but again, we're from the Upper West well, Side of Manhattan, so this is just what we're like. Yeah. So like, okay, so given given that you guys had a rapport already, um, what was the script process? I mean, I imagine there was a script, but also was it there... was set. Yeah, yeah, we had nothing to do with it. It was like a, a totally written, wonderfully written piece that was just given to us, and we just acted. They were they were great about letting. Us, sorry, I'm, am I bulldozing? Am I talking? Shut up! Just talk. I love hearing you talk. Bulldoze us, please. Uh, we uh they were really generous which always helps me in letting us improv like when they really needed a line or you know i think we always would say it by rote too but we also had a lot of freedom to to just say the line slightly differently or improv and and i and uh and yeah it was just cool to have that freedom so max did you improv the line zhuzh my crack was that in the script or was that all you <laughs> i can't believe they used that <laughs> I, you know, that was the moment that we really hit on something beautiful. Yeah. I remember when you said that. <laughs> I thought it was Juice My Taint. There might have, that might have been a different take, yeah. Oh, multiple tanks. Cra crack. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the yeah. director's cut has Juice My Taint, I believe. Ray, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you, shoot, did you shoot on the actual day that the episode is marked? It's marked April 17th. No, no. And I was going to say we, um, it was funny that Peter called it summer camp because so we were calling it that when we were doing it, but I don't think we realized that it was also the dead middle of summer. Mm. It was. The solstice. 
<laughs> it was it was like literally what mid July. Oh my god. Malibu, California. All, all those months, if, if, they still, we still, I mean, I now have some handle on it because I'm back in New York and it gets cold. But in LA, with the coronavirus, it, it was all one month. But that's why this experience, it was like before this and after this. That was my only milestone. Right, that's true. Oh, that has yeah. been a single. And we're so lucky that we had this gift of breaking out of our quarantine, you know? Also, I'm working now and everybody's so scared on special. Everyone's freaked out. And it's like, girl, I ripped the Band-Aid off in July. Like, we already did this. And it was a blast. And everybody's kind of more focused. So I feel very uh, at ease working with all of these uh, stipulations and with all the PPE. Anybody, hey, uh, Max and, or, I'm sorry, uh, not Max, uh, Brian and Peter, do you also have experience um, working now in the age of COVID aside from working on social distance? We've really been unable to book any of those. <laughs> 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 um, are you asking if we're booking? <laughs> <laughs> Look, this was a job I had before, okay? It was a job I had before the quarantine. Dude, there's a real universal appeal in the fact that, like, you know, we have to navigate our relationships differently. But at the same time, as a gay guy, I'm, I'm watching this and I'm thinking, okay, yeah, Peter, uh, Peter, the way that you come over with a mask on, that is sort of like the reality. Is it speaking to you on a personal level as much as it's speaking to me? Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. I mean, I um, have been both single and partnered in this experience. And yeah, I mean, it was, it totally felt like a new, um, just like a new, yeah. I mean, it's hard to even articulate. Yeah. Like how, what, what, what's, what is done? I mean, yet there's like new, new rules now, I guess. Um, and I am something of a hypochondriac. So that, that was uh, very easy to tap into. Um, yeah, for me, I, I mean, I, I tend to be single. <laughs> yeah, I haven't really attacked it consciously, like this new um, challenge of dating. It's been more, if I'm truly obsessed with the idea of this person, I might hang out with them. You know, it's there's so many more gates for my psyche to go through. <laughs> and my psyche does not tend to clear those gates. Therefore, there are few prospects. <laughs> so no, no, like no virtual, no virtual pandemic dating for you at this point. Well, I have been doing quite a bit of that, but it tends to be boring. There's not so much going on in people's lives. There's not so much to catch each other up on. Um, I, I find it like just not like it's like a facsimile of of getting to know someone. It's like we're all doing performances of being chill and like being our normal selves. That's just my experience. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, Brian, do you, think, do you Brian? have, yeah, go for, go for it. I mean, I guess, yeah, I've done a lot more FaceTiming than ever. Like, Do you like it? Um, I, I, I can't get down. I, I just can't feel like I'm really getting to know someone. I guess I haven't done any real, like, uh, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't call it like da formal dates, but I have like FaceTimed with people, you know, in a maybe a romantic way or something. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's definitely not as good as the real thing. I mean, just like <laughs> are not as good as gym workouts, you know, but, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I think like, after the loneliness set in after a while, the FaceTime really was able to quell that in a way that just staring at my wall could not, you know, or watching the news on loop. You know, at first I felt so sorry for myself and I was like, my friends who are partnered don't understand and they need to be checking in on me more. And then I started to feel even worse for them than for myself, which I, would... I guess our episode is sort of about a little bit is about the challenges of that because I, I started to see them jumping out of their skins. I started to see my partnered friends freaking the fuck out. What? what? I'm sorry, what? No, no, I couldn't hear you. 
Uh, I, I was saying, I was agreeing. I prefer the solitude to like being bottled up with one other person. Yeah, I'm already like traumatized that I have to share my space with him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, seeing as though you guys had this rapport and you guys were friends and you um, were colleagues prior to working on this show, um, I imagine, so like the threesome when you actually get down to it is very like giggle worthy. I was like in stitches watching you guys. But I, then I thought like I wondered now that I know that you guys all knew each other, um, was it even more hysterical actually doing it? It was like, so normal. It was so oddly yeah. second nature yeah it felt a lot like doing a play in the be in the best ways i i i i for one obviously love you know film and tv but there is like a that kind of giggliness that you're describing you get that a lot when you're doing like plays in college because you're like all there together and you're just like doing the scene over and over again and uh and it, it, it had some of that, you know, where we were really like just working on this thing all day, every day. And, the, and that scene reminds me of that, just like of some very, because it it's like very physical comedy, you know, almost farcical. It's true, because typically the crew is not laughing at you. So you have this kind of not unresponsive audience. Right. But in our case, we were making ourselves laugh. So we didn't give a fuck about anything but what each other was saying about it. Yeah, it was for us. Yeah. Right. I don't think I have anything more to add to that. It was, it just felt like effortless fun. And I agree. The fact that it was just us there, it, it was, it was giddy. It was just, it was, it was giddy. And it was giddy. It was, it was the, it was just fun. It was pure pleasure. I'd say top to bottom. Same. Although we did have a sound guy standing outside for 12 oh, hours right. a day. Right, 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 right. Big I shouts. just wanted to acknowledge him because I can't believe he did that. Yeah. Did you shoot it? How long did it take to shoot? A week. Oh, a week. About a week, yeah. I was in and out on one day, but you guys were there for like... No. Yes, you had I a was couple days. Day. I feel like you had two days. You think that because we had so much time in the hotels together. <laughs> we had a week of isolation in the <laughs> hotel prior to shooting. Oh, you think that because we had so much time in the hotel. Oh, you guys were isolated in a hotel prior to shooting? Did you have to then yeah. get... Okay, was that... That was for safety protocol, I imagine. And then you got COVID yeah. tested. And, okay. and, it, and it really, it did feel like a different time. Entering the hotel, I did feel, I felt a little on edge. It was like my first time going into a public space be since before the quarantine. So, but then by the end of it, I was chill. Did you use that time in the hotel to rehearse or did you just like screw around, have fun? We weren't allowed to see each other. Oh, you were isolated in, right, separate hotels. You were alone. We, we saw each other, but at a distance. You know, yeah, we would be like on the balconies, far apart. With our masks. Yeah. I thought that they maybe like made you a pod and just decided to put you all in a hotel room for a week together. <laughs> just to, but no, that's sad. I'm sorry that you spent so much time alone in a hotel. We agreed that the pod thing could have worked, but they were determined to divide and conquer us any possible way. No, I mean, it was like every precaution you could think of. There was no precaution too um, silly seeming. <laughs> we, had to, we had to gargle mouthwash before every kiss. Yeah, they were really, they were, they were, they really were. Does that work? Because as I enter dating life- That was our question. I might just, yeah, bring a bottle of Lysol, or li not Lysol, <laughs> don't- Sure. <laughs> Listerine, Lysol, whatever. And I'll just, I'll just yeah. you know, gargle right. it as I'm making out with somebody. And we'll just, we'll swish it back and forth. What, Peter? So I'm imagining you pull out like a silver flask. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. you want some? It's mouthwash, it's mouthwash. I mean, it'll fuck you up. It will. Is there anything about the episode that you would like to spotlight that happened maybe behind the scenes that's a fun little tidbit or anything else that you would like to share? We have, we have like 30 jars of funfetti. Oh my God. They like stayed in my, is it, what, what's the, is that a jar? Like a cylindrical cardboard? A pint? Yeah, a jar. Yeah, a container. container. Um, fun, because there is this phenomenon in, in, I think I'm using the word phenomenon, right? In, in um, you know, filmmaking where they're like, you have to have a lot of something if you're gonna maybe do a lot of takes. 
And then you also have to have options to be like, do you want the pink one or do you want the blue one? And so we had like 20 options and like for 20 takes and we just, we just had like a, an amount of fun funny where I kept like opening boxes and being like, it's more? Funny. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't know, we probably ended up using quite a few of them, maybe 10 of them or something. But a, a And on the first take, I was eating just heaping spoonfuls. You were, you were and really at first, yeah. My body started to shut down pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it flew through my body. <laughs> I mean, it was like, talk about coronavirus. It was like, it just decimated my, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so we ate a crazy amount of, of Funfetti, but also we were just witnesses to a really large amount of Funfetti. I, I don't think I've ever engaged with Funfetti before in my life, you know. So. <laughs> I'm glad this brought something special to your life, Brian. Yeah, I was like, I know, I now, I now know this product, you know. Yeah. Um, should you come clean about your endorsement deal? <laughs> a partnership, Funfetti partner. <laughs> or is this you angling for one? <laughs> and obviously that's awkward because they approached Brian and not me. Uh, well, these are hard times oh. and Max, you've got work. It's true. <laughs> Chris is in on our inside jokes now. <laughs> yeah, invite me to the next um, hotel party, the next hotel yeah. pod party. It was a lot of sitting, you know, watching the sunset, texting each other, getting Postmates. Yeah. You know, it, it was sort of, uh, I don't know. It was everything, everything has an element of tedium now. <laughs> More, just in one extra element of tedium than it did before. Yeah. It, everything in life. It set the bar high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or somewhere. <laughs> yeah, somewhere. <laughs> well, I, I hope you guys are all, all just doing well in general. And, um, and this is like an insane time. You know, yeah, how are you? What's that? You know, oh, has been upgraded by the host and now includes unlimited minutes. Oh, what, really? Oh, yeah. I, I keep getting that. I, don't, I didn't upgrade. I don't. That's all Zoom. I, I'm not. Keep going. I thought it was like, oh, this is going so well. You upgraded. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think like the Zoom spies think it's going well, and that that's a good feeling. Yeah, the Zoom people are like, I like this. Keep going. Okay. Like more. Yes. Let's have more time. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Uh, I got banned from Grinder for impersonation for the second time the other day. I can't believe this is happening. Wait, pre people don't think that you're the real Brian Jordan Alvarez. Me, yeah. So, like, somebody is looking at a screen, I and if they that. and they're reporting you, they're actually taking the time to report you as a fake. Yeah, I wonder though. Yeah, yeah. But maybe it's somebody who's I working. I, for think a, I think that's a bad wonder, basically. What did you say? <laughs> that's cool. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's a, it's a, I think it's a humble brag. Yeah. Sometimes it's I play fake. along when they, when they think I'm fake, I'll be like, yeah, but isn't his work great? <laughs> to find out what they really think. And then I think that's. Oh, shucks. All right. It's, yeah. It's real. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, nice to see you guys. And thanks for, I'm glad that, I'm glad that we have this content, I have to say. So, um, and that we have your episode in particular. Uh, I can't wait for um, the straight people in my life to see it because I feel like it has real universal appeal and they're going to be like, yeah, see, I'm not that different than a, a gay couple who oh. wants to have a No, they'll never get it. They won't. You're right. But we will. We'll know. Yeah, we'll get it. And we can have, we should have conversations with them. Yeah, yeah. we'll try. Yeah, we'll try. <laughs> all right. All right. Nice to see you all. Thanks again for your time. Okay. Love you guys. Hey, Chris. Well. Yeah, nice to meet you. Okay, bye.